US guided coiling of rectal varices presented by Dr. Roy J. Mukada, Dr. Pradeep G. Matthew, Dr. V. Francis Jose, Dr. Anthony Paul Chetipura, Dr. Rajesh Anthony and Dr. Ibrahim Koshi from the Department of Gastroenterology and Radiology, VPS Lakeshore Hospital, Kochi, Kerala, India. We have nothing to disclose. Rectal varices are reported in about 38 to 94 percent of patients with portal hypertension. However, they present with significant bleeding in less than 5 percent of patients. The current treatment options for bleeding rectal varices include endoscopic injection sclerotherapy, endoscopic band ligation, transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt placements, balloon occluded retrograde transvenous obliteration and sinoculate alone or in combination of coils. We report a case of rectal variceal bleeding managed with EUS guided coiling alone. Indication uncontrolled rectal variceal bleeding. Contraindication hemodynamically unstable patients. Equipments and preparations Pentax EG3870 UTK 3.8 EUS scope, Olympus CFHQ190L colonoscope, expect 19 gauge flex EUS needle, M-ray embolization coil 5 mm into 3 cm 0.035, no bowel preparation, no sedation, no fluoroscopy used. IV cefepressone 1 gram 1 hour before the procedure and 2 doses repeated 8th hourly after the procedure. Case, a 65-year-old male with alcohol-related decompensated cirrhosis of liver with portal hypertension, MELSCO 25, presented with recurrent lower gastrointestinal bleeding to a local hospital where he underwent multiple sessions of sclerotherapy for hemorrhoids. He had received multiple transfusions of packed RBCs and fresh frozen plasma at the local hospital. But his bleeding persisted. He was referred to our center for further management. At our center, after the initial hemodynamic stabilization, a sigmoidoscopy was done which revealed a large rectal varices and not hemorrhoids as previously thought, with active bleeding from two sides. The rectal varices were distinguished from hemorrhoids. Rectal varices were more than 4 cm above the dentate line. Endoscopic sclerotherapy was done with 16 ml of sodium tetradecyl sulfate 1% into four sites but we were unable to achieve hemostasis. Due to persistent active bleeding, he was injected with 2 ml of sinoculate under direct vision onto the bleeding site. Hemostasis was achieved and the patient was discharged. A week later, he presented again with lower gastrointestinal bleeding. A repeat sigmoidoscopy showed thrombosed area of previous glue injection. No soft areas could be identified on probing with closed biopsy forceps. As our experience with coils for management of gastric varices and duodenal varices were good, we opted to do an EUS to assess the feasibility of EUS guided coiling. EUS showed a large rectal submucosal collateral varus and the Doppler study showed good flow velocity. US guided coiling was done using 19 kg needle as previously reported. The varix was chosen based on EUS window and depending on the flow velocity. As the chance of migration is less in low flow vein, we always try to place the coil in low flow veins. The coils are selected based on the diameter of the varix. Here it was 5.9 mm. Usually we prefer to place oversized coils. Unfortunately, at that time we had only 5 mm coils, hence we used that. Under EUS guidance, the varix was punctured with a single sharp jab movement. The stylet was withdrawn and a 5 mm coil was advanced through the needle into the target vein using the needle stylet as the pusher. After placing one coil, we checked the flow and we had to place one more coil through the same needle at the same site. A repeat Doppler done immediately after the coil deployment showed significant reduction in the flow. The absence of Doppler flow was reconfirmed after 2 minutes and the needle was then removed. 
For EUS guided coiling of gastric varices, coils are deployed and if Doppler flow is present, we used to inject a small quantity of 0.51 ml of glue in the same site. During EUS, rectal varices are seen as rounded, oval or longitudinal hypoechoic areas in the submucosa. Perirectal collateral vein may also be seen outside the rectal wall. Sharma et al. had described EUS guided glue injection as a viable option in bleeding rectal viruses. Romero Castro R. described their case series of EUS guided coiling for rectal viruses where they had used multiple coils. Weilert et al. had described the use of coils and glue in their series and had used multiple glue injections and coils in their study. However, in the present case, there was no further requirement for injection of glue or coil as Doppler flow had disappeared completely with the initial deployment of two coils. Mesalem et al. reported the use of coils along with glue for bleeding rectal viruses, but they completed it in two sessions and required more glue. Follow up. Our patient was followed up for three months and he expired due to non-bleed related complications of decompensated cirrhosis. Usually after proper placement of coils, it will remain there, but at times it can dislodge and fall off. We have seen duodenal varix coil completely disappearing on long-term follow-up without a scar. We have no data on long-term follow-up of rectal varicel coiling. Conclusion In patients with cirrhosis and portal hypertension with severe lower GI bleeding, the possibility of rectal varices should be considered. US guided coiling of rectal varics is another option to control bleeding.